Hi, I'm Donna Scheiman. I'm the computer teacher here at St. Paul's in Stevensville. And tonight I'd like to explain to you some topics on internet safety, hopefully give you some tips that will help you, and also talk about what we teach your children regarding digital citizenship. So let's get started. We'll start with internet safety, but before we do, I want to explain what digital citizenship is. Digital citizenship refers to the responsible use of technology. And students in grades five through eight learn about these topics throughout the school year. Then we reinforce the concepts as we work on our topics and on our projects in class. If you have any questions or comments as we dig into the information, please write those down and we will, show, we will give you information on how to send those to us. I'm sure I won't know all the answers to your questions, but I'll do my best to find answers for you. These are all of the different topics that we'll be talking about tonight. Our first one is cybercrime and what we can do about it. Well, what can I do about cybercrime? What should I fear? The short answer to what you should fear about cybercrime is pretty much everything. As developers give us more and more features and tools to live our lives online, Criminals also find ways to develop new threats. In other words, to do what they do best, be criminals. The list is endless and growing. So what can we do to protect ourselves and our families? Well, a lot of security tools are available for us. The best answer I can give you is use common sense. Think of using common sense as cyber stranger danger when you talk to your children. We're gonna talk about passwords in just a few minutes. But let's take a look at those updates that you get continually on your computer. I know they are a pain, they take time, they make it hard to get onto your computer after you just do one. However, a lot of times those updates include patches include information that will help protect you against the latest and greatest cyber crime. So it is worth taking the time. And social media accounts, oh my goodness, be careful. Besides the fact that your employer and future employers very well may be watching what you post, have you ever mentioned your pet's name or your maiden name in a post? These are key bits of information that criminals gather when they're trying to put together a profile to hack into your accounts. We're all guilty of that. You've probably given that information out, talking about something cute that your pet did. However, that information is oftentimes what you use to answer security questions as well. I know I'm guilty of that, something to be careful about. Your home network, think about strengthening it and you may need help, you may need to do some research on this. Think about what is on your home network and what could be hacked. Is your refrigerator on your home network? Does it need to be? Think about those things as you set it up. And are you sharing your password to get onto your network with everybody who comes over so they can use the Wi-Fi? Again, caution. Identity theft. This is a topic that really can scare people and it should because it can be very damaging. We're going to go into that more in detail as well as talking to your children about internet use and monitoring their accounts. We want to make sure we use strong passwords because those are the ones that aren't as easy to guess Definitely do not use something that's related to you that would be easy for someone to figure out. Longer passwords are better. I know they're harder to set. I know they're harder to remember. It's easy to get confused with all the passwords we have, but longer is better. 
Most systems require that you use a minimum of eight characters. I have run into systems that require 16. It's a challenge, but again, it's worth it. And whatever you do, please, oh please, don't write those passwords down and post it on the wall by your computer. Store them in your phone or put them in an Excel spreadsheet on your computer. That makes it even easier for the criminal. Now, it is important to change your passwords frequently and probably not at regular intervals that are all the same. That makes it easier for people to guess what you're doing, but change them frequently. Most systems will prompt you every 90 days, but there are other systems that will never prompt you to change your password. Not a good thing. And when you do change your password, you know, make sure again that it's something you're going to be able to remember, but that it is complex. If you start getting a lot of suspicious emails or something just doesn't look right, that is also an opportunity to change your password because it could be that something is starting to happen. Someone is starting to work on getting into your system. So what are your options besides passwords? Well, there are some other things. First of all, you might, be, might want to use a passphrase. Think of a phrase and then pick letters from the phrase, add numbers, use uppercase, lowercase letters, and use some special characters. The other thing to consider is multi-factor authentication. In other words, you need more than one piece of information to access a system. It requires more than a password. And the reality is you're already using multi-factor authentication. When you go to the ATM machine, you either scan your card or you put it in a slot and then you enter your PIN number. A lot of times if you watch your doctor, when they get on the computer, they will run their card through a reader and it's their ID badge and then enter a password. Again, multi-factor authentication, something to consider. Identity theft, this is a tough one. This is just a very difficult situation to be in. It may be something as simple as you used your debit card in a parking garage and your, account, your debit card number was stolen. The criminals may have used the number over the phone in order to make purchases, or they could have uh, put together a counterfeit debit card and be using that or it could be very complex. They may be able to get in all of your information to steal everything. So if you are the victim of identity theft, analyze the situation and figure out how it happened. When was the last time you used that card? What were you doing? Was there anything strange going on? Did a bell go off in your head that said, maybe this isn't the best thing to do? I know that happened to me when I used my debit card in a parking garage but I was being cheap because the machine did not give change. My parking time was very short. I only needed to pay $2 and all I had was a 20. I was not gonna lose $18. So as it was, I had a very busy day the next day, getting that straightened out, blocking the card and getting a new card. Make sure that you know your financial institutions, policies and procedures. If you do suspect that you've been the victim of identity theft, that a card number has been stolen, what should you do and how much time do you have to do it? Be sure to notify your financial institution as well as filing a police report. Also check your electronic devices for viruses. File a complaint and contact the credit bureaus because identity theft can really mess up your credit report. It's critical that you monitor, 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 and take action as soon as you realize that something is wrong. So we're going to be getting into the different topics that we have. We'll be talking about the family discussions, things that could help you moving forward.
Think about it. What are your children doing online? Probably a lot of things depending on the age. It can vary depending on the age. We have to be careful to make sure that the older kids, that the teens aren't spending over half of their waking hours online. You might want to look into parental control software. Talk to your kids about it. Explain to them why you would be doing that. Also consider what's the best place to have the computer. Is it in their room where they can get into anything they want? Or is it in a common area of the house where you can see what they're doing? We'll be talking about cyberbullying in a while. And we do cover that with your children. But besides that, there's just so much inappropriate content out there and predators waiting to take advantage of your children. You can certainly consider blocking websites, filtering content, setting time limits. Although also remember as your children get older, they'll probably find ways around those things. Consider monitoring their phone use and using GPS tracking software to stay on top of where your kids are at. They might not like it, but if they are aware of it, that's going to be the voice in their head saying, uh-oh, I shouldn't be doing this. And they need that. Also, I didn't realize this, but after the age of 13, your child has the same rights to privacy as an adult. So set up that cell phone account for them with your information before they turn 13. And I know this feels like spying, However, it's really working to keep your child safe and works best if they are aware of it, are aware of why you're doing it and understand why they're doing it. Certainly it's gonna cause some difficult situations, but it will be worth it in the long run. So let's look at some of the topics that we discuss with your children as well as topics for you to have a family discussion. There are questions to ask your children. For instance, what should they be sharing with people? We talk to them in computer class about the types of information, such as private confidential information, like your social security number. That should never be shared with anyone. Personal information is information that's not unique to you. It might be your date of birth. It might be the town you live in. It could even be considered your address. And public information is information that is readily available to anybody doing searches on the internet. So they do understand the differences. They do understand that they should not be sharing any private, confidential, or personal information. Also, think about who knows their usernames and passwords. Hopefully you do, and that's something you should be asking for. Also, find out what kind of files they download. And please make sure they understand that because the link says click here, it's probably not safe to do that. And that goes for us too, as adults. It's so tempting depending on what that ad is, what the email says, what that post is on Facebook but be very careful. Don't click links unless you know the source. You're gonna to wanna to be aware of what websites your kids visit and also what websites they may get to accidentally. What games do they play online? Certainly you wanna know the games. It'd be a good idea if you know the content of the games and if they understand that your approval is required in order for them to play those games and think of all the different devices that they might connect, use to connect to the internet because each one of those devices is a way for a hacker to get into the systems at your house. Social networking, wow, this one applies to us too as adults. What sites and apps are they using? The internet gives us so many ways to connect with people, family, friends, and people that we don't see very often. That has been a really good thing, especially during this pandemic. Social networking gives us a lot of different platforms to use to share our pictures, thoughts, and have discussions with people. It's important to discuss social networking frequently with your children. It's always changing and new platforms become the latest, greatest way to connect with friends. 
sadly, it also exposes us to people that your children shouldn't be in contact with because the predators can find them through those platforms. And that's something that we have to be very careful of and a good reason why we monitor their use. Ask your children to show you the different platforms they use and how to use them. It's also important for them to realize that the information, the pictures, the videos they post could follow them for a very long time and impact them negatively when they apply to colleges or for a job. College admissions people, the human resource departments, all scan social media when you apply to get into a school or to get a job because they can learn about your character from your posts. You, and they may not give you the benefit of the doubt that, well, I'm sure they've grown up since they made that post. So something to be very careful. Games, oh boy. It's thrilling to be a champion and you can play games online with your friends at all hours. Yeah, I do hear those stories from your kids in computer classes to being up half the night when they have a day off. They're playing games with their friends, friends that are probably in their computer class. It's one thing if you're aware of it, but consider time spent on games can be a real distractor from schoolwork, from interacting with you as members of their family, exercise, getting fresh air, practicing the piano or that band instrument, and the list goes on and on. If your child just can't get up in the morning, there very well could be a reason why. It's critical that you know what games your children are playing. What's the theme of the game? What's in the content? And who are they, inter who are they interacting with? This is another way to keep on top of what they're doing because this is another area that is continually changing. You might wanna consider sitting down with them and asking them to teach you how to play the games. That will be a real eye opener as you get into the content of the game. What is cyberbullying? We spend a lot of time with, we, well, actually, we spend time each year with your children on that topic. It, the course that we use is geared towards their particular age group. So they start with it in fifth grade and we build on what we tell them. So cyberbullying, there's not enough time in the day to, affect, to discuss the effects of cyberbullying. We hope that it doesn't happen in our circles. However, we are all sinful. There's always a chance that your child could witness cyberbullying, that they could be a victim, or that they could be doing the bullying. They may think they're joking with someone that may not be that someone's reality. Consider cyberbullying a serious form of aggression that targets an individual. It's usually repeated and it's going to usually be more intense online than it would be face to face because the person doing the bullying feels that they have protection because that they're on the internet. They aren't face to face with the people. You'll find a lot of different guides that can help you on handling cyberbullying. We do tell your children that if they should see cyberbullying, if they should experience the cyberbullying, to please come to you, go to you for help. If they see anyone being bullied, they definitely should go to you for help, whether it's face-to-face -face or online. We've told them that they will help you. Sadly, I have gotten some pushback from the kids because they feel that going to a parent could actually make the situation worse. So something to think about, again, reinforce that you are always there for anything that bothers them. Okay, this has been a favorite. During the pandemic, uh, especially good old Amazon, it's also something that can get to be very expensive and out of control. I do recommend that even though Amazon likes it when you save all your credit card information on their site, so you can do that one click shopping, it's probably not a good idea if your kids are using the same computer, if they figured out how to get to your different accounts. 
They enjoy the shopping, but they probably don't understand yet that we have to pay for those items they buy. Balance. Now, this is a topic I saved for near the end. However, this is a topic that we cover right at the beginning of the school year because it is important. It's an opportunity to focus on good time management skills, and, and it's also important to set the stage as we begin our school year. I know we've all heard it, but just five more minutes. Please, I'll be done in five minutes. Let me have that time. Well, it's easy to get caught up in our online activity, whether it's playing a game, whether it's talking to friends, whether it's reading through different social media sites. However, it is very frustrating then when we finish and we realize all that we should have gotten done, could have gotten done, and also realize that what we're doing now is probably not going to be done to the best of our ability. God has given us 24 hours in a day, and he certainly wants us to have fun and relax. However, is it in the best use of our time he gives us to spend most of that time online playing games, talking to friends. He wants us to use our time wisely. He wants us to use it to serve him, to spend time with our families, to be out in our world. And playing Fortnite is not the answer to that. Also think about it, the human brain is malleable into the 20s and carving those negative pathways from some of the games, those habits, of being online continually, those can lead to some very difficult issues later. So balance is key. Now, our last topic on this section, house rules. This is your section. I'm sure you already have house rules on internet use. If you don't, now's the time to get going on those. Write them down you might work together as a family to put together your list or you might write them yourself and give them to your kids whatever you do make sure they understand those house rules and that everybody signs the document the other point i want to make here is update them periodically because things change and also your kids are growing up probably faster than we all want them to Now, our curriculum, our topics are selected from Digital Citizenship by Common Sense Education. And you might wanna check this site out because they do have a section for parents. It's free, you can sign up and get their newsletters. You'll learn a lot from these sites. We don't cover all of the topics, but we do cover the ones that are key for our kids. And this curriculum is used by other well schools also, the curriculum is separate for each grade. So topics can be based, selected on need, and we are assured that they are at the level of our students in that particular grade. A lot of sources out there, and I could have gone on forever digging on sources. These are some things that have been very helpful, and we'll find a way to get this list to you. And that is all I have. So thank you for your time. Again, if you have questions, let us know and we will do 